Hi friends, it's Deanna here today and today we're working on part two of our Gamer Kids capsule. It is super cute. It's got um, three super cute patterns, the Be Active shorts, it's got the Great Adventure tank and the Tatum tank and it also has a vinyl uh, cutout uh, for uh, one of your tops. So today we're going to be working on the Tatum tank with the uh, vinyl cutout. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, and then go check out our second video, or well, our first video, where I show how to sew up the Great Adventure tank and the Be Active shorts. This is such a great capsule for just any type of kid who likes to play any games, not just video games, but just to hang around the house or hang anywhere, run around, get wild, do what uh, kids like to do. So let's get started. So I have gone to my kids gamer pattern capsule on my account and it brings me all the different patterns that I have. I'm going to go down to this uh, eat sleep game repeat cutting file and I'm going to click on it. I am going to go to my recent downloads. So this is my download that I downloaded today and I'm going to click on it. And here come all the different files. Um, so you have to figure out what is the best for your, um, what you're trying to do. So that it gives you an SVG, PNG, PDF. If you want to print it out, um, however you want to do it, I am going to do SVG file. So I have opened my Cricut space. I'm going to go over to upload. I'm going to upload an image. I'm going to browse. All right. I'm going to hit recent here's my recent and here it is i'm going to click on it and open all right and here is my file i'm going to name it i'm just going to leave it like it is if you want to tag it if you have a ton of different files you might want to tag it i'm going to save it and then i'm going to be able to open it click on it insert image and there is my file. From here, I can figure out if I want it, how big I want it. Okay, I want it, what size of my t-shirt at the front. So I'm gonna measure my t-shirt and here it tells you how big it's going to be. If you want it to be skinnier, you can unlock it and make it go skinnier or you know, uh, taller, depending on the sizing that you want, depending on what you have on your shirt. All right, so now you have a couple of different options. Um, you can highlight it and you can choose to uh, weld, which means that there will all be, it'll print out just like this and it will all be one color and one sheet if you want it to all be the same. I'm gonna go back because that's not what I want. So I want all the different ones. So I'm gonna highlight it. I'm going to ungroup it because I want them to be all be separate. And then I'm gonna grab each word and highlight each word. So here's the one word. And I'm gonna go down here to the uh, right hand uh, bottom. And I'm going to weld those together. So I want that one to be one piece. Then I'm gonna go to sleep and grab that together. Oop, no, 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 just sleep. Okay, so come on, there we go. All I did was I clicked down, held it down while I was sliding it over and then I'm gonna weld those together. So it's one, one by itself. Then I'm gonna go to game because I do wanna print them out the different colors and I'm gonna weld again and then repeat and weld. So now these are, as you can see right here on the right hand side, they're all different separate things. So I'm gonna hit the green button at the top right hand corner to make it. And you'll show me all the different colors. Now you don't have to use the color it tells you here if you have different colors you wanna use. If you wanna put game and repeat together in, in one color, that's okay. It is really up to you what colors you wanna do, but this separates it and shows you. Then if you're going to iron this on, you want to hit this mirror button so that the word it's backwards because once when it cuts out it will cut out backwards and you can iron it on to your top so sometimes i like to just go ahead and do it to all of them so i won't forget when it's time to actually print 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to continue. Oh, I have not attached my device. Go ahead and plug your device in, plug it in and get it. All right, so now it's showing that my machine is plugged in, but it's telling me to make sure that I pick the right one, make sure that you load your machine. So you can click on your actual picture here on the left-hand side and it shows you just how big you want that, that image is gonna be and where to place your, uh, your color. So it looks like I'm gonna place it um, at least to the, to the number two inch height wise and width wise to the number five. So you gotta make sure you have enough paper for that. So first thing you wanna look at your paper, you're supposed to put the clear side down. Sometimes you can't, it's kind of hard to tell. So I like to grab a little corner and I kind of mess with it. Sorry, it's kind of, and I find where my clear side is. So when I opened it right there, I can see that this is where my clear side is. So I want my other side to be up. So my clear side down, because this is what's going to cut. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on my mat. My mat is a little dirty. It's a sticky mat, so it sticks to it. Remember when I showed you on my laptop, I showed you that it, it's gonna be the, the number two into the number five. So you wanna make sure that that is covered. And we're gonna go ahead and load our machine. I make sure it's on iron on and it's loaded. Once it's loaded, it gives me the option to go ahead and push. It says it's ready, press go press the flashing button. I'm gonna press that flashing button and it's going to feed my uh, paper and do its thing. And then I'm gonna do that same thing, exactly what I just did to all my different color mats. So I'll remove the yellow and add the next one, which will be the green. And then I'll cut my words for the green and so on and so forth. See how it's telling me the process that it is cutting my um, file. Once my uh, laptop says it's upload, uh, unloaded material, that means it's finished. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that blinking light where I load and unload, and there it is. And then my cut has been done. Now I'm going to do the same process for the next one. Just paste it and go and keep going. All right, y'all, here are all my pieces with all my words cut out. I am crazy. You know, I get sidetracked, distracted. I don't even think about things sometimes. Guess what I did? I never measure my t-shirt, my panel, my front. So I just, you know how when I was showing you how to do it, I just made it big and I'm like, okay, you make it as big as you want, blah, blah, blah. Tall, skinny, whatever. I never like check to see how I wanted it. So we're just crossing our fingers that it is going to actually fit or I'm going to have to redo this whole thing because I just kind of went for it because that's how I am sometimes. It's probably not good. So I'm going to go ahead. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look really closely to see where my words are and I'm just gonna cut right around my word. I don't want to waste a lot of my vinyl. Um, I wanna save that piece for later, so that's why I cut around it. And then I'm gonna grab my word and I'm going to pick at it. And sometimes it's really easy to pick at it. Sometimes I have to use tools. So there's little tools um, that you can use and I'm just pulling off that, the rest of the vinyl off of my letter. I'm gonna get my, the dot, the center of my A, get, get that off. And there's my game. And then see how it's mirrored? So now I can see it right side up and I'm gonna put that right there. And I think it's gonna be fine. I think it's gonna fit just fine. I'm gonna do the rest. I'm gonna cut the rest of them out and do that. And then we'll um, iron them up. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and set them up in order. Now make sure that your the part that is actually colored is not over any of the uh, other plastic. 
So what you could do is you could do one at a time and then even them out and then the next one, the next one, or you can just place them all on top of each other, but just make sure that that, that colored piece is touching your bodice because that's how it's going to attach. So I am not the best at getting it just straight. I should probably uh, like use a ruler and measure, you know, obviously you want to get it um, as straight as you can. Sometimes I fold my fabric in half and make that half mark, but I'm just going to go for it because that's just how I am. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use a ruler and I'm going to measure from sleep to the side. It's almost five. Sleep to the side is less than that way so I can kind of move it a little bit. I mean, it is up to you how technical you want to be. You all know I'm not very technical and you can actually like move it around and make it your own. Like if you want to like put it one over here, one over here, or just put it scrambled up in there, it is up to you. Now that it's on there, you're going to grab your iron. I'm going to turn my steam off. My iron wants to steam. I'm going to grab a piece of cloth or something to put on top. I have done this before where I go right on the vine, on the, on the thing. Uh, when I was looking into it, some people just go straight to it, right on the, uh, right on it. So it's up to you if you want to just do that right on it or if you want to go ahead and use some cloth to put it on top. With my iron hot, I'm going to press on it. You might want to do it like on, um, you can do it on a, on something, a hard area, a sturdy, somewhere sturdy. Like I'm doing it on my ironing board. As you can see, my iron is dirty and leaving specks behind. I don't know why sometimes it does that. I need to clean my iron. Okay, when I go to check it, I like to look closely. I don't know if you can see, you can tell that some of it is kind of bubbling. You can see the fabric through it on some and then the other ones you can see that it's not stuck yet. So I want to make sure that it's all stuck nicely before I remove it. I think I was focusing too much in the middle and not focusing enough on the top and the bottom. So I'm just gonna focus on that. All right, then I'm gonna carefully start removing the clear off of it. Carefully making sure that your letters are actually sticking. Looking good. That repeat looks a little off. It's okay when you wear it, the body moves. And then I'm gonna do it again. I just wanna make sure that it's really, really stuck on there. So you can do like one word at a time, just focus on it. Then the next word, then the next word. Just focus on them being really good on there. And then what I like to also do is I turn it around and do it from the back as well. I am over the top with this because I don't want it to come off on the wash. Now some of you might have a press, a heat press, and that will be awesome. But I don't have a heat press, so I have to make sure. Okay? Now, if you look at your letters, I, what you want to see is you want to see the, the fabric kind of come through. like. You can see on some of these letters, you can see the little bumpiness of the fabric on there. And it is ready to put our shirt together with this awesome um, vinyl on it. All right, y'all, time to actually sew it up. So it's, um, this top is very similar to how we sew up our Great Adventure tank. So we're gonna grab our top. This is our back, uh, my front bodice. I'm sorry, I said back bodice. Here's my hoods. I have everything kind of gathered up in here with the pattern pieces. I like to put my pattern pieces, um, kind of stick my pattern with my pattern pieces. That way they kind of stay together. Um, and if I have any questions about what's the front, what's the back, what's the side, what's the what, then they're kind of together. So I'm gonna grab my shoulder seams and I'm gonna match them up. So both shoulder seams and then both side seams, right sides together. So this is the, both right sides of the fabric, they're touching. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin those and sew them together. All right, now we're gonna grab our band and we're gonna uh, paste them right sides together. So this is my one band and my other band. 
I cut them out of different fabric just because I wanted a uh, different contrast on my shirt. So I'm going to have the bottom is going to be uh, contrasting. So that's why I wanted, I went with that. Um, and we're going to sew out those saw, those sides, those raw edges. I was going to say raw edges and side at the same time. So that's why I said saw. I had stepped on this clip, but I knew it was about to break. So it's dead. All right. So sew those. And then we're going to also go ahead and prep our armbands. What we're doing with our armband is we're going to, oops, I caught one long armband. This is supposed to be two armbands. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. You know how sometimes you cut them right on top of each other and then forget to cut the one side? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold them wrong sides together to create a memory crease. And then when I am, then I'm going to go ahead and just like I'm sewing my waistband, I'm going to sew my armbands on the round. So I'm going to grab those raw edges and sew those raw edges together on both. So let's go sew these pieces. All right, so for our waistband, we're going to go ahead and fold in half. And I like to pin the sides and then we're going to find so the sides, these are our sides, so we gotta find our front and back. So we're gonna put our front, our sides together and we're gonna go to the back and then to the front. And we're gonna grab our bodice and put it together at the sides, again, as well as the band, and go to the front and the back so that way we can find our quarters. And I like to like do a little notch. It's just a little tiny piece that is going to be covered when we do our seam with our seam allowance, but it'll be there if, in case anything moves. So then I'm gonna fit my band and match those uh, quarter points. So what I want to be the back is gonna match the back and it's gonna be right sides together. Whoop! My clips just slip right out of my fingers and then they end up on the ground and then I end up stepping on them and breaking them. So I am going to match up all those quarter points. And then we're gonna sew it. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for my armbands so that they're also prepped. So I'm folding them on that memory crease. The reason why I do a memory crease for my bands and not really so much for my waistband is because the waistband is wider, so it's kind of easier. Uh, than it is with the armbands. So I do for the armbands and the neck band, I usually do a memory crease. You can do a memory crease for your uh, band as well, your bottom band. So I'm gonna go to the front and mark it. And then I'm going to put the front and the back and mark those quarters. I'm gonna do the same for the other one. And then I'm gonna grab and quarter my armhole. So I'm gonna match the, those seams and go to one side, match the seams, go to the other side, do the same for the other armhole. And then I'm going to attach my band, right sides together, fit it, match it, and I'm gonna match up those seams at the bottom and then match up all the quarter points. And now we're gonna go ahead and sew all the way around, all of them. So for my bands, I always like to face my bands out, up so I can see them. Then I get them in and I'm going to grab them on the quarter point, match up those raw edges, make sure they're matched up and so when I get to that quarter point, I remove the pin and I go to the next quarter point and then go all the way around. All right, for our hood, we're gonna put both the liner and the outer right sides together. So these are my both of my outers, and then I'm gonna do the same for both of my uh, liners. Now, if you're doing, if you're not doing a uh, lined option, then obviously you'll only have one uh, set. But I am doing the lined option because I love having the contrast of the lining 
Um, so that's why I'm doing that. But we're gonna go ahead and pin them right sides together and we're going to sew around the outer edge, the crown area. So we're gonna start right at the top and go all the way down to the back of the neck. So uh, don't sew, this is the front of the face, this is the neck, um, this is the back of the head. So we're sewing all that. All right, so I'm gonna grab one of the hoods I'm gonna turn it and fit it right sides together with the other one so that the top is together. And then we're gonna go, see, here's that top seam, and then we're gonna go down the front to the uh, bottom towards the neck. And we're gonna sew them together, right sides together. Now, if you only have, if you're not doing a liner, then what you'll do right now is you'll grab this face area and hem it. So you can just go ahead and hem that face area if you're not doing a liner. Like I said, I just I just like liner. So that's why I'm doing a liner, but you don't have to. And it'll save you some fabric too if you don't have enough fabric and you're like trying to do a quick, easy project with scraps. So yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew around that face area to put the hood together. All right, so we're gonna turn our hood right side out and you're gonna steam that raw edge and then if you want to top stitch you can top stitch you don't have to I might top stitch what I like to do is I like to steam the seam up towards the liner if I have like a liner that is uh, kind of a different color and then that way I have like a little piping of that color showing once I top stitch, so that's how I like to steam. So I'm gonna go ahead and steam and I'll top stitch over on my uh, cover stitch real quick. Um, if you don't have a cover stitch, you can use a zigzag stitch, you can use um, any kind of stretch stitch on your sewing machine or a double needle or something for if you want to do the top stitch. Now, you don't have to if you don't want to, that's just uh, preference. All right, our hood is prepped and ready. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find our back and our front on our uh, bodice, couldn't think of the word. And I am going to match up the back of my hood, right sides together, so the outer layer touching my back of my hood. Whoop. Those clips are so slippery. I did put lotion on my hands because my hands get super, super dry from, I guess from sewing, like all the fabric takes away from my natural oils of my hands so they get super super dry so I try to put lotion on and so I think that that's why my clips are so slippery. All right so we're going to go a half an inch away from that middle point um, which I assumed to me that's half an inch right there so I'm going to place that there. The reason why my uh, out my liner seems a little bit longer than my outer. It's because of the fact that I folded it out so it's kind of placed up, but that's okay because I'm just gonna run over it. Um, so I'm going to um, line up, see what that seam with that seam right here, which is my quarter point, and then I'm gonna grab it the other side, come around and line up those two seams so it's the other half, uh, half an inch going this way. So it's half an inch from the middle going this way, half an inch from the middle going that way. Now, a lot of times, like if you're if you're a little bit, and then I'm gonna line up just raw edges along the rest of it. Make sure you've got all your layers. It, it doesn't matter if you're doing a single layer hood or a double layer hood, you're gonna do it the same way, except for obviously you got to make sure if you're doing three layers that you have all three layers are cut when you're sewing it together. You don't wanna have a gap. Okay, so sometimes what I was saying was sometimes uh, if you are not, if you're a little bit afraid to sew the three layers together, you can go ahead on your sewing machine and just baste it together first and then sew it on. And that makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew all that around and we are done. That was super quick and super cute. I love, love, love this. I think it turned out great. So let's sew it up. All right, y'all, we are done. How cute is this top? I love, love, love how this turned out. And honestly, I was kind of afraid because remember what I said, I, I didn't even measure. I just kind of went for it and it turned out perfect. Um, and the hood looks super good. 
um, all the colors and everything. I am super excited for him to see it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and try it on him and post some pictures. And I'll tell you, I already had him try on the capsule part one, the Brie, um, the Great Adventure tank and the Be Active shorts, and he's actually wearing them. That's why I'm not showing them right now. And he loved it. He loved the panel, the gamer panel, um, because it's got like Super Mario on it and he is obsessed right now. Um, so I'm sure he's gonna love this one as well. So I'm super excited. Please let me know what you think about this so along. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I did, let me know which piece is your favorite. Um, and um, comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't so you can be entered for a fun fan giveaway of $50 Alien Maggie certificates. So you can get all this pattern uh, capsules. Come join us on Facebook and Instagram if you're not part of our uh, groups over there. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you all next time. Bye.